high. Greetings, I'm Chappers. And I'm the captain. And this is a golden god of pedals that do interesting things. They've done it again, Strymon. Uh, you know, managed to invent something very sophisticated and very, very clever and put it in a box that stupid guitar players will understand, which I think ultimately should be the strap line of all Strymon. That should be the Strymon stupid website. Guitar Strymon, players will... we make clever things that stupid people can use. Um, Built for me, then. Now, this has been highly, highly anticipated because up till now, obviously, Strymon haven't really gone terribly close to the whole distortion pedal thing. Ho, 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 ho. Hello, children. It's Santa Claus here. And you know, I always give you anything you want for Christmas. So just make sure that you tell Mummy and Daddy that you need Santa to bring you a 1959 Les Paul or a pre-CBS Strat and I'll make it happen. Ho, 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 ho. They kind of got a little bit sort of on the what could we do with distortion with the deco, but this is the first balls <coughs> out distortion pedal. I love that they almost like held it back, held it back and then went, okay, there you go. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so why is it clever? It's clever because it um, combines a traditional analog JFET style distortion. Combines the A with the D. A with the D. <laughs> uh, with um, all the kind of super high power DSP that you'd expect from Strymon. So what happens in this pedal is the first thing that happens is the signal hits a traditional analog JFET uh, gain stage. Mm. And then before it gets out the other side of the pedal, it goes through multi levels of DSP to kind of fine tune and get the sound that you want. You heard Rob playing uh, kind of like a signature Rob Chapman kind of tone at the beginning there. Just a but what riff. I really need to do is show you what it would have sounded like without the pedal on. Slight so, riff and then turn it off. Yeah, go I on. Think then. That'll be so we didn't even have that over like a mildly crunchy sound or anything. That is crystal clean to super high well, gain. It's, it's Now here's where the pedal gets kind of clever. So it really, if you don't know anything about, and you don't even care about why this pedal is clever, then that's fine. Plug it in and use it like a normal distortion pedal. You have a drive control, um, two uh, levels of gain, you know, low and high, two um, normal, you know, two EQ settings, a normal and a mid boost one, and three, you know, button the controls here to change the EQ. Um, what's clever though, is the DSP kind of controls the way that the EQ is voiced depending on how you've set the uh, gain stage, the analog sort of gain stage. So in uh, as you begin to drive the, the input gain more, as it will change kind of how the mid-range control reacts and the kind of frequencies it's adjusting t for it to sort of best interpret how it thinks is the nicest gain sound. So we've got, um, so I'm gonna focus kind of just going through some of the sounds. There are, you know, there's another switch here that I'll talk about in a minute. I'll talk about what the favorite thing, I'll talk about a couple of the hidden features at the end. But for now, and for want of a, a better way to go, I'm just gonna go through some of the suggested settings from the manual here. Um, and we're also gonna use the amplifier in both <coughs> its clean mode as it is now and in yeah. a very crispy kind of little bit edgy. So let's start with, there is a drop tune mode how close were we to drop tune mode? We weren't very close. Right, so drop tune mode, let's do this. 
um, and see if it sounds good as Rob's guitar is drop tuned. So here we go, we dial it in like this. <laughs> There's a lot of low end in that in that Sound sound. Great, yeah, it's incredible. Uh, then if we if we back this down, there's another you know another pre, uh, not, you know, like a suggested setting here called edgy, which I'm guessing is going to be a lot more uh, you know it's like a like push gain. No, I think just for sort of you know just like rock. Interesting. I wonder what that's like if I if I tap out the old geese. Yeah. This should sound good. We've got fat drive. Fat drive <laughs> should be good. Uh, here we go. This is, this is using the lower gain mode, but with the mid range pushed a little bit more. So here we go. Everything it. it does is Can great. Can you switch it to channel two now? So we've popped the, the Friedman run onto channel two uh, and we've just literally added a hair's amount of, of gain in, so like this. And I'm gonna pick a boost drive for the setting that I want here to just see what happens if we boost over the top of a gain signal. So let's start playing now. distortion pedal is it this one um okay let's get into a couple more of the clever sort of tech bits as well so built into the pedal uh you have a standard on and off switch uh which will just literally turn on however the knobs are, are set at the time however you also have what's called a favorite switch so let's say for example uh, that rob's favorite setting was a much higher gain let's see it was what the very first like. time we did with the clean channel actually there's nothing I like better than putting my flashing bulbs over a lovely tree. So we're back on a clean sound now. I'm gonna dial in that kind of crazy high gain sound yeah. that I had for Rob at the beginning. Here we go. <laughs> if I press and hold the favorite button, a lack of this, until it, uh, goes on and off, then essentially that's now my favorite sound. So oh. if I drop it back down to so a, more a, of a, a rhythm crunch. sound. So that's really, really easy. Anybody that's can great. remember how to do that. 
What um, a great idea. And this black switch that we've got here uh, is plugged into the boost uh, section. It's the more switch. So there is a one of the hidden features in here. Uh, well, not hidden features. One of the features is that you can plug uh, this. This is called a Strymon mini switch. So this is this is looks very similar, or in fact identical, I think, to the favorite switch. But the switch works very slightly differently. So don't forget if you've got uh, if your Strymon manual says you need the favorite switch to do the function, make sure you buy the favorite one. And if the Strymon manual says you need the mini switch, make sure you buy the mini switch the, because they look very similar. In fact, they look the same. So one of the clever things that I can do with the boost, uh, one of the internal things I can do, if I just hold this button down for a couple of seconds, or whatever, it will allow me to adjust how much boost it kicks in. The maximum is 6 dB, but you can set it anywhere from zero to 6 dB if you want to. We've set it to maximum just for effect. And what will happen is when I hit this button, uh, the boost will kick in. So again, let's get a let's get a sound for Rob. Here we go. Great I know. I always know when I've lost Rob in a demo because Sorry. basically he just carries on playing. Uh, so that's the mini switch. That's fifty nine pounds. Uh, this is two ninety nine pounds. If you haven't, uh, how much for the uh, Ohio? Uh, yeah, this is not. You don't need this to use the Riverside, but, but it looks great. Uh, in twenty sixteen, Strymon launched <laughs> a couple of uh, power supplies for their pedals, so we thought we'd use that. Yeah, I said, you know, this will run off of uh, any nine volt supply with a two hundred and fifty mil um, output. OJ is cool because it's minuscule. Oh hi. oh, hi. It's just more if you're going to be using other Strymon pedals as well that all require... The, the high output, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, so the Oh Hi, oh hi uh, is tiny, and it'll do five 500 milliamp 9-volt outputs, um, which is perfect. So if you've got five Strymon pedals on your board, and you've only got this much space to fit your power supply on, yeah. that's what you want. Um, that is 150 quid, I think. Wow. So... What was that? So the other feature, I'm going to have to get to change guitars, really, because the other feature on this is the built-in noise gate. So we need a noisy guitar. Um, okay, so we'll go for a um, like a medium gain driven tone, and we'll put it on a single coil pickup, and you will hopefully hear loads of buzz. A little bit of buzz. You can you can hear the buzz, right? So what I do to adjust the noise gate is I hold uh, same again. I hold down the the on and off button until everything starts flashing. But now what's happening is th so the level control was the one that did the boost. That's what I had to adjust to uh, to see whether it was six dB or not. And the drive control wow. does the noise gate. So if we turn your volume up, okay, there it is. So what I've got to do is I need to turn the drive control up until. Okay. There it is. Pretty Happy much. with that. Yep, yep, yep. And then I just literally switch it off. And that. <laughs> and there you go. Now, you obviously, I think noise gates are one of those kind of effects where um, inevitably uh, some guitarists don't like to use noise gates, you know, because they, they will at some point during the kind of decay of the note, it'll just get to the point where it can't tell the difference between the background noise. It, whack, whack it up. Let's have a little, put a bit more gate in. Uh, okay. Let's just see how natural it is. I'd be interested just to experience. So this is kind of like maximum gate. Okay. You would only use that if you if you were a genty kind of guy using super high gain and you wanted that harder cutoff that the gate would Actually, do. Can, I, can we have the high sound with that and, and get like a gent sound because that that's kind of what they do. They leave all the gate in. Yeah, and it's kind of fun. But obviously this is a strat and this is. Do you want to go? Well. No, no, it's fine. All 
the fun. So <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put that gate setting kind of back to where I would. Butler. It really doesn't need it doesn't need to be on very much at all to get rid of that sort of first layer of yeah. annoying hiss, which is kind of cool. So there, you go. there we go. Do you want to have a go? Uh, I would like to have a go. I'm yes, just still to see very what it's upset like. You're not wearing the turkey hat. Well, I just you know I'm, it's very small and I've got a really big head and it's really uncomfortable. Could somebody? I threw my plectrum in a fit of rage at some point earlier on. It wasn't really a fit of rage. Oh, what a catch! Let me have a little try with this. Um, so I. Oh, it sounds great, doesn't it? So I would probably go. I don't know actually. What would I sort of do? That's nice. We've got the noise gate on just a tiny bit, and what you can see is it doesn't affect the decay of the guitar. That's a rig, isn't it? For, for anybody that's that guitar, this pedal, and that. Hand. Yeah. For anybody that's watching there, that goes, oh, I'm bit, always a bit nervous about introducing anything digital into the sort of the, the signal chain of my. Is it true bypass? Uh, I don't know. Actually, yeah, I think I think I think I'm pretty sure they are. It's true bypass. Um, because the Strymon man on the floor down there just said it is. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't going to give away the Strymon man on the floor gag, but anyway. Um, yeah, for any guitar player that's kind of nervous and thinking, do you know, I've got like a, you know, I've got this, my class A valve amplifier and I just use analog stuff and, you know, I buy all my expensive cables and I'm worried about, you know, don't worry at all. Well, you, don't you don't really, buy a Strymon and enjoy your vintage tone. See you I, later. But you, you, it doesn't feel like you've done anything to, 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 to make, yeah, to, to, to sort of interrupt that kind of very analog kind of flow. Yeah. I did, I have just leant over the back here and realised as well, one of the things I didn't show you, um... If, if you're going to literally just, if this pedal is the sort of thing where you just go, do you know what, I'm just going to stick this pedal in my gig bag and then kind of like wherever I go, I can just use this pedal into the front of an amplifier. It has got quite a handy little sort of EQ switch on the back designed to compensate for amps that are perhaps overly dark or overly mm. bright. I guess in the same way, perhaps compensate for guitars that are maybe overly dark or overly bright as well. We, we actually have just had that in its middle setting the whole way along, so we haven't really used it. Um, you know what's interesting to me is, is they, they chose the word Riverside to be the name, because I think people would be forgiven for thinking that Riverside, it's a gentle, relaxing scenery, it's all about it's a, it the bluesy tones, and it's all about, you know, that kind of, but, but I mean, it really is a sonic chameleon. It's gonna get you dirty, filthy, genty. Gen Bambacan alongside the more bluesy, relaxed country tones, even I think. I, I like it a lot. I've always liked the look of Strymon pedals as well. You know, it's going to fit in with the, the whole kind of vibe with all, all the other pedals that they make. So, look, there you go. Um, oh, I know, I tell you, there's one other thing as well. The expression pedal output on the back, that has two cool functions. The first function is uh, that you can assign the expression pedal to be one of the uh, knobs that's on the front. So if you uh -huh. want to be able to introduce drive from an expression pedal, you can do that. Uh, but the other thing that I thought was clever, you can actually assign this pedal to tell another Strymon pedal what your favorite setting on that pedal is. Oh, wow. So if you want to do kind of like, you know, turn 
you've, so you've got this on, when you hit your favorite button here, not only was it, would it recall your favorite sound in here, but, but maybe you had a favorite delay sound on your Strymon pedal, wow. it would tell that to simultaneously give you your favorite delay well, that's sound. that's absolutely insane for 299 pounds. Cool. Yeah. And that's not MIDI or anything like that, that's just literally doing it via the sort of the favorite thing. By the way, this switch is 59, yep. and this Ohi PSU is 149. That's right, you're completely correct, Mr. I know Chapman. things. There's really nothing. Yeah. It's a good distortion pedal. It's a good distortion pedal. A lot pedal of people are going to be features. very happy for Christmas when they get this golden Riverside from Yes, Strider you're very lucky stocking. as well. There is there is one last shipment of Riversides due into the UK before Christmas 2016. Um, so there we are. Yeah. Well, I've been Rob Chapman. And I've been the captain. See you there. Riverside. Tell me about Rory. So he uh, edits videos. Rory's awesome. <laughs>